How does Angular do what it does? I'm going to tell you right now, the answer is not black magic. I've read that. I've been inclined to agree with it at times. But, I mean, how does Angular know what to do with the, the application? Like, how does it know that this is an HTML template, we need to bind it? At the lowest level is you have your compilation cycle. So when a page loads, is it loads your static DOM. AngularJS is then loaded. Then you have your on content ready event that's fired, which kicks off. That's what Angular is listening for. So that's the entry point. Then Angular goes and looks for the application within the HTML. So that's your ng app. And it says, oh, we have an Angular app in our page. From there, it goes through and says, first of all, it will compile all of your services, your controllers, everything that you've declared on your module basically gets compiled. It then goes through the DOM and says, what directives do I have? What are the AngularJS pieces within the HTML? And it generates a template. So that's the compilation phase. And then it goes back through and it links it together. It says, this template gets this scope. It binds it together and you have your view. So kind of in a very simplistic way is you basically have compile that goes through, says, this is how this module needs to be configured. This is the DOM that it needs to be configured against. And it merges the two, and you have your application. So this is basically a graphic of what I just talked about. HTML and your static DOM, DOM content loaded event. It looks for the app. From there is it uses the injector service to go through and configure, say, what, what services do I have? And it will go through and make a list of all these things that it needs. And that's what you use Injector for, dependency injection. So I'll get into that in a little bit later. But it goes through then and continues to, the Injector will then go through. you got your compilation. It will generate your root scope and its children's scope, children scopes, and kind of put that all together and then shove it and now you have dynamic DOM. So that is you know, very simple. It's just it's taking your HTML, it's taking your JavaScript, and it's zipping them together. And let me actually show you an example here. And this is just going to be a real quick sideline. But it's kind of it's it's a good way to actually see what's happening. Is on a whim to prove that I could, I actually had a data structure that the data structure was essentially the same, but I needed to render um, it needed to be rendered differently depending on the type. So, for instance, if it was an image, I needed to do an image layout. If it was a video, I needed to do a video layout. If it was a, like a note, I needed to do a note layout. And so, one way that I approached it is I basically created a bunch of templates. So this is kind of when the compile goes through, is it kind of grabs all of this. And then from there, depending on the content type of the structure, I would go through and I would say, give me the, te give me the HTML. I'd attach it to DOM. And then using the compilation service, using compile, because it still exists, it's still there. Because when you're doing like repeats, you're adding, you know, dynamically adding directives to the page, is this is what's happening. So this is why I pulled this out to say, like, can I manually do this? Is I said, I want to compile this element's content, so the HTML, with this scope. And bam, that's what happened. Is now. You can see, 
So it's the same data structure, but at runtime, when I'm adding these things, is it's compiling the HTML against scope. Does that make sense? Cool. 